Hello guys, welcome to a new video. So we're going to be comparing these two lenses versus each other. We've got the kind of 100 to 400 Mark II L with the 2x Mark III extender on here, and this is the RF 800 mm f/11 lens. We're testing images at f/11, um, and we'll do a bit of a conclusion after this segment where we have a look at them images. So without further ado, let's go to the office and have a look at the images. So we're just going to take a look at these images that we've got from the RF800 and 100-400 Mark II with the 2 times extender Mark III. Um, so here we have the 800 RF lens. Let's just zoom in there and have a look at the image quality right up to 100% so you guys can see it there. So that's the quality we're getting from the RF lens. Let's have a look at the EF 100-400. Uh, we're getting good detail, I do like it. Um, and let's zoom in there, right in there at 100% and give us a comparison. So that's the 100 400 Mark II. Let's, uh, let's just quickly have a look at the 800 RF and the 100 400 EF. To my eye, I think we're getting slightly better detail on the 100 400, but we're about 6 meters away. And I do think when you focus on something not so far away um, if I'm honest with you the 100-400 does a lot better especially that it has a better minimum focus at 98 centimeters which means that lens can go a lot closer if something clo comes close to you you can take an image of it you can't do that with the RF because its minimum focus is 6 meters so let's jump to the next image so here is the 800 RF lens we have a good image here of this statue. Let's just have a look in the eye. That's why we were focusing at 100%. That's 100%. And again, giving us good detail. I do like it. Um, again, we're just um, over six meters away here. And let's have a look at the next image, which is similar on the 100 to 400 Mark II. Zoom in there. 100% so that's the uh, zoom lens and this is the prime lens and I do think we're getting a slightly better detail on the RF when the subject matter is some distance away I think when something comes close to you the 100 to 400 seems to be superior um, you know the old added of getting closer to your subject matter will give you dramatically better sharpness in your lens. That is very true when you take into effect um, your environment um, because you know um, heat haze and cold temperatures can have a, uh, an effect on your lens. So let's have a look at the next image which is a duck statue that I've got. This is the RF 800mm lens. Uh, let's just zoom in there to 100% show our detail. I think we're getting good detail here. This is just over six meters away. Let's have a look at the 100 to 400. Let's zoom in there 100%. And it seems fairly good. Let's just jump over to the 800 um, and then compare that to the 100 to 400. They're very similar images. I don't think there's any major problems here. If you're interested in what sort of camera I'm using, I'm using the Canon EOS R 30 megapixel full frame sensor camera. Um, so obviously giving us good results. Um, and obviously we're using, if you didn't know, I'm using ISO um, 500, the um, aperture set to f11, and my shutter speed ranged between uh, 160th of second to 320th of second during daylight so obviously that's what we're getting in our settings let's have a look at the next image which is a bench this is the RF 800 so let's just zoom in there at 100% to see what we're getting in terms of image quality and that's the quality we're getting we're probably about 8 meters away now so it's a bit further away so let's have a look at the 100 to 400 um, obviously this is a similar image, let's just zoom in there. I do think there's a slight lack of contrast here um, versus the one uh, versus the 800 RF lens. So let me just zoom in there to where we was on the RF lens, 100%. So 
so that's the 100 to 400 and that's the RF it does seem to be slightly better detail not much but slightly um, on the 800 RF so it goes back to what I was saying I think the RF lens does really well at distant subjects but when subject matter come close to you um, it can't compete with the 100 to 400 in image quality as well as clo uh, fo close focus capability um, you're talking 6 meters on the RF 800 versus under 1 meter on the 100 to 400 even with the extender on so let's jump to the next another image which is some rhubarb uh, leaves that we've got here I just want to zoom in there we're focusing this area here on the RF 800 lens um, that's 100% um, it's not super sharp but as I've said it, I can't see this lens really competing with the prime um, 2.8s and f4s um, so I'll look at the 100 to 400 see how that does and um, zoom in there at 100% let's compare it to the 800 and that's the 100 to 400 very similar I can't really tell the images apart the, the the results are fairly good for both lenses if I was to say there seems to be a slight softness here versus the um, 800 so I do think it's subject uh, distant subject matter this is 8 meters away approximately um, it does produce slightly better results but I'm only going to give it half a percent better than the 100 to 400 you know if you if you really wanted to you could give it maybe one percent slightly um better image quality but i don't think it's more than that so let's have a look at the next image so i set out my test chart on the bench here just to see how image quality um will be on both of them um because obviously we've got two test chart images here um, I did ha have to up the exposure and contrast on the 100 to 400 to make it more comparable. So let's have a look in there in the corners and see how the detail shows up um, at 200% there. Um, I won't say it's a fantastic showing with the um, RF800. Let's jump over to the 100 to 400 and, and just have a look in there and see how that's doing at 200% so you guys can see so that's the 100 to 400 in the far corner left bottom corner and um, we're looking at the pattern in these boxes to see how, how it shows up and then this is the RF 800 uh, there's a slightly tiny amount of better detail in that pattern not much but it is there nevertheless um, let's just go back to uh, fit the screen so we can have a look at the center this time let's have a look at the center there at 200 percent on the 100 to 400 do the same on the 800 and that's your comparison there so that's the 800 rf in the center and that's the 100 to 400 mark 2 with the two times extender mark 3 and there does seem to be a slight better amount of detail i also do think that it's more of a true 800 millimeter than the 100 to 400 mark 2 with the two times mark um, three extender because i do think that lens is probably closer to 370 millimeters rather than 400 so you know we it's probably not quite as mag magnified as the 800 rf lens is um as you can see there um but i still think the rf 800 is doing a slightly better showing at distant subjects right so we're just gonna have to take a look at this bottle this is the 800 RF image and here is the 100 to 400 mark 2 with the 2x mark 3 extender and obviously you can see the difference in bokeh so that's the 800 RF and that's the EF 100 to 400 it seems about the same bokeh seems pretty much the same both lenses were set to f11 so that's what you can see in this this uh, demonstration let's just have a look at the um, text here we should be seeing a diamond shape in the actual um, um, label in the print material which we can't see here so it, it doesn't seem to be showing a, a great result same being true of this 
um, 100, 400 Mark II with a two times um, extender. I just don't think they're giving fantastic detail when you start magnifying down. Um, but nevertheless, they are both good combinations to have. Um, what I would say is there is a 600mm RF lens available and I would steer you away from that um, because if it's giving similar results to the 800 RF lens I think the Sigma 150 to 600 and Tamron lenses are going to be sharper, give you a better aperture uh, as 6.3 is significantly better than f11 and lets a lot more light in and they are sharper. I have done tests to uh, verify those on this bottle um, so clearly I would say that the RF 800mm lens isn't as sharp as those prime lenses that are a lot more expensive such as the 2.8 and f4 lenses as I've said um, but I hope this demonstration was informative looking at the image quality we can obviously go in there a bit more if you want to see at 300% again we're at 300% here um, and that's the image quality we're getting. So that's the 800 RF lens, and that's the 100 to 400 Mark II. So that's the RF 800. That's the 100 to 400. Very similar results. Um, so you know, for the money, I would say that the R the RF 800 is a reasonable lens to get. So I just hope this demonstration helped you. Welcome to the conclusion of this video. So we've got the Canon 100 to 400 Mark II L lens here um, with the two times Mark III extender, and here we've got the RF 800 f11 lens, um, the diffractive optic lens here. So this is a prime. So if you want to zoom, you have to move with your feet. This is a zoom. So obviously, if you want to get closer, you just zoom in. Simple as that, or zoom back and back out. Um, in terms of image quality, they're probably pretty much about even Stevens. Um, what I found was in low light situations, the Canon 100 to 400 Mark II um, combo here was superior, um, especially indoors in low light situations. However, what I found is out in the real world, um, I found that the diffractive optics was a tiny bit sharper. But I'm going to have to stress how close they are in image quality. It's literally. Um, they're pretty much bang on, even Stevens in my opinion. Um, you might notice a 5% increase in image quality out in the real world with the RF lens. Um, but in, in terms of general imagery, you're not going to notice that difference. Um, so I found the stabilizer on both lenses about even Stevens. Even though this is a USM lens um, with the two 2x Mark III extender on, obviously that slows it down a little bit. Um, so that sort of brings where the USM probably normally it would be faster. Um, if I take the extender off, it is going to be faster. However, it sort of levels the playing field when you put the extender on in terms of the fo STM focus on the actual um, you know, the mirrorless lens here, the RF800. So I've got a list here of information to go through with you guys. So, uh, we're, it's basically comparing the 100-400 Mark II L lens with the uh, 2x Mark III extender versus the 800 RF at f11. We tested images at f11. I've been taking pictures of this bottle close up, um, well, as much as this lens will allow because minimum focus is quite huge. So let's just go through uh, the elephant in the room, which is image quality. They're about even Stevens um, out in the real world. I don't think you're going to notice a big difference. And considering the Canon 100 to 400 has a, um, a 2x on extender on, it does reflect not so greatly on image quality on the RF 800. If you're thinking this lens is going to compare with a 300 2.8 or a 500 f4 or a 600 f4 prime lens you've got to think again because I'll be honest with you it's nowhere near um, it's closer to the 100 to 400 with the 2x on than it is to any sort of prime you've ever owned before um, so an alternative to getting this might be 
the 300 F4, put a two times extender on that, and you, you, you're at F11, um, pretty much. Um, a lot, you know, obviously having better options in terms of focus, um, in terms of coverage on the actual entirety of the viewfinder and the LCD screen. So let's have a look at weight. So we're talking about 2.5 kilograms, all in all, for the 100 to 400, versus 1.2 kilograms. Now that is noticeable. Carrying this around is a lot lighter. As you can see, I can swing that around, no problems, and it's easy to hold. However, if I pick this up, it's not as easy, because it's a lot heavier. And if I started doing this video holding both, you'd find that this arm would get quite a bit tired quite quickly. Um, so obviously, um, image quality we've said is about even Stevens. Let's have a, let's talk about the focus limiter. So the focus limiter on the 100-400 is three meters to infinity versus 20 meters to infinity. And I think that's probably too long. I would have liked to have seen Canon bring out a 10 meters to infinity something along the lines of the big primes I've got. Um, I think 20, 20 meters to infinity is probably too long. But nevertheless, at long distances, you may like to use that. So the minimum focus, which is a big deal, as I touched on earlier. Obviously, this has a minimum focus of six meters. And that's vast, trust me. That's pretty much the length of my garden. And that is, probably too much. I would have liked to have seen Canon to, to have come down with something like 4.5 meters like you've got on many of the primes or even the 600 version has that. Um, I think six meters may be too long especially if something comes close to you. So you may want to pair this with another lens if that happens. The uh, Canon 100-400 minimum focus um, is 98 centimeters that's under a meter so that's massive literally the distance between me and my camera um, which means I can focus and get even macro shots with this combination quite easily um, so are they going to be as sharp as the prime the answer is no I don't think the diffractive optics of this lens can compete with a prime lens at all so you know, I don't think getting this lens is going to be able to negate the possibility of you having to buy uh, a 500 f4, um, a 300 2.8, 600 f4, or anything, anything like that, or even say the 800 5.6, which obviously is a lot more money. You got to remember that. So obviously, I don't think this lens can compete with the primes, but it can compete with the 100 to 400 with a 2x extender on. Um, so let's talk about price, the elephant, the big elephant in the room that is. So for this sort of combination, in terms of a grey import, if you wanted to get this grey import combination, it probably set you back approximately £2,000. Around £1,500 for the lens and £500 for the extender. Um, if you were to get this in the UK, um, it'd probably be nearer to 2700 because uh, at the moment the 100-400 EF lens is selling for around £2,279 if memory serves me right. Um, so once you put the cost of the extender on there, because it's a UK version of the lens, it's going to cost you a lot more. As for the 800, you can pick these up for around £1,000 directly from Canon. I have seen them go for second hand for as little as 800 so you can get it a lot cheaper. Right. Um, Something we need to address is focus coverage of your entirety of your viewfinder or LCD screen. Now, the thing is you get a white box with the RF800, which is about half the size of your viewfinder area coverage or your LCD screen. So you're only getting a small portion of your um, focus points covering. So all that means is if something goes out of that white box, you're going to lose focus. You don't get that with the L lens. You get full coverage of your viewfinder. All autofocus points um, are usable with this lens, um, albeit not as fast as you would expect in terms of a prime. But nevertheless, you get full coverage 
with the EF lens that you don't get with the 800. Um, so obviously we, we got, we're looking at the same focal length, 800 millimeters versus 800 millimeters. Um, image quality versus the Sigma 150 to 600. Some of you guys may have those 150 to 600 lenses. Um, I found that the, my Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary lens was sharper than both of these, literally, a lot sharper. Um, granted, it's not 800 millimeters; it's 600 millimeters. Um, obviously, I didn't try an extender on to see how that would affect the image quality, but this is where I would not want to get the 600 RF lens. It just seems pointless to me. Why would you get um, an f11 600 millimeter um, lens? When you can get a 150 to 600 at 6.3, a better aperture, more light comes into your your lens. Um, and when it came to image quality, I think the contemporary is sharper than both of these when we start cropping in. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so that's why I have addressed the 600 mm RF lens in this video, where I think it just it, it's no contest, you know. Um, you know, it has a minimum focus of 4.5 meters versus 2.8 on the Sigma, or 98 centimeters on the 100 to 400 bare. Um, obviously, you can put the 1.4 extender on as well, getting you to around 560 millimeters. Um, the 1.4 seems to do really well. The the one thing I have noticed when I did compare these two lenses is contrast takes a hit with the extender and it doesn't on the RF800. Which means when I, if I want to get similar results in terms of contrast, I have to put this in Photoshop or Lightroom and up the contrast a little bit just to get it similar to what the RF lens can do. And so in terms of image quality though, at distance, I think they're pretty much even. While I still would give it a slight edge to the 800 RF in terms of um, distance subject matter, but when it came to closer subject matters, um, like indoors, like the video I recently did, I found that the 100-400mm um, 2 L lens was a bit superior. Um, so, you know, in terms of assessing these two lenses, really it's up to you what you want to go for. Um, while I feel the 100-400mm 2 with the 2x extender is probably pretty much even, you do get some benefits like full coverage of all autofocus points in the viewfinder where you don't quite get that with the RF800. However, it is lighter, you do have that control ring so you can use a control ring to adjust um, exposure, um, shutter speed, ISO and obviously the 100-400 does not have that. In terms of stabilisation they're about even four stops rated of stabilization, focus speed, I found them to be pretty much very similar. So you've got to remember US aim is, tends to be quicker but because it's got that extender on it slows it down a little bit and obviously an STM motor isn't quite as fast as a USM. So when I started looking at the autofocus speeds I felt they were about very very close to each other, very similar and I don't think you'd be too disappointed with autofocus performance with either of these lenses. So in conclusion, do I think the RF800 is a lens you could or should buy? Sure, sure I do think it has its uses and obviously it's beneficial, it's a lot lighter, um, you can obviously carry it around for a lot longer, um, but I think if you're going to carry this lens around to do birding or um, aircraft photography or you know do wildlife or sports even, I think you need to pair this lens with another lens. You could pair it with the 100 to 400 Mark II without the extender, and you'd be good to go, and you'd have your bases full, fully covered. Um, personally, I think I'm going to keep the 150 to 600 contemporary handy combined with this, um, and that should give me the benefit of having um, sharp images up to 600 millimeters. Anything that I need to take a picture of that's further away, I can switch to the 800 lens and uh, hopefully that will do the business. So hopefully you found this conclusion a little bit informative. 
make your own, own mind up. If it comes down to money, you might want to go for the 800. But please don't expect that the 800 IRF lens is going to replace the, you having to buy a prime like a, a 300 2.8 that is probably two and a half times more expensive than this or say even a second hand 500 f4 mark 2 is going to set you back about two two and a half thousand pound for the mark 1 or about five thousand pound for the mark 2 and obviously um kind of recently released um some mirrorless versions of that um i believe the 600 f4 that they're bringing out is around thirteen thousand pounds lots of difference in money here um, so hopefully this video is informative I hope um, the conclusion gives you a bit more background information on these two lenses um, in terms of sharpness if I am personally going to go out and photograph things that are closer to me I'd want to take this with me however if you're going to be taking pictures of things that are some distance away I think this might be a slightly better lens to carry around with you because lighter um, and has equal focus speed in my opinion to this combination but um, in terms of the stabilization they're as good as each other I do not think that you will be disappointed with the stabilization um, and that's what I like about Canon stabilization it's, it's just works better than the competitors the likes of Sigma, the likes of Tamron um, even in the Nikon world, I just I just think that the the um, stabilizer just is smoother, um, is less jerky than those manufacturers. So hopefully this this was informative. Um, you know, hopefully uh, I got a few points across to you regarding whether you you which one you feel is better suited for you. Pick the lens that's best for you. Don't let people try and tell you what lens you should get. Make your own mind up, be informed, listen to opinions on certain lenses and certain equipment for different scenarios. You know, for indoor use, this is going to be better because you can zoom, you can take the extender off. So you can change that f11 aperture to 5.6 at 400 easily. You can't do that with this lens. It's fixed at f11, that's all it'll be fixed at and you'll never change that so hope you found this video informative so I just wanted to touch on video however this is where I think the um, Canon RF 800mm um, f11 RF lens um, shines and um, comes to, into its own so because it's got an STM motor on this particular lens for autofocus all focus is pretty much silent so for doing video work this is amazing it focuses quickly um, the stabilization is really useful so if you're out in the field and you're doing video work this is actually a better lens than the uh, USM um, 100 to 400 here so if you are serious about doing video work I would recommend this lens now while I've said don't resolve a huge amount of resolution compared to a big prime um, you know like an f4 or a 2.8 lens for video that's not a major issue because you don't need those big apertures when it comes to video so as a video lens this is amazing while I'm not too overly um, impressed by the image quality um, when it comes to taking photographs in the real world um, I do think when it comes to video this lens comes into its own so that's why I think it is a good idea to get both um, you know if you're on the fence and you don't have the money for a big prime that may cost you between five thousand and thirteen thousand um, pounds you could probably buy this grey import um, with the extender for probably just under two thousand pound while the 800 RF lens sets you back about a thousand pound. Some extras that you can buy for this lens I would certainly recommend would be um, obviously um, a, a UV lens filter to go on the front which is 95 millimeters, um, a nice lens hood. This is a uh, JJC lens hood not the original Canon one. You can pick these up for about 18 pound. For a decent filter 
probably talking about around a hundred pounds and then I, I found something called um, what's it called uh, a THRF 680 shoot um, basically it's a mount you can attach onto the uh, tripod mount um, that allows you to hand hold it quite comfortably like that um, so I would recommend getting hold of this um, tripod mount for the RF800 but in conclusion um, I think both of them do a good job but don't expect the RF lens to compete with one of the big primes a 2.8 or an f4 when it comes to video this shines brilliantly um, however because I think the 100 to 400 Mark II is slightly better um, because it gives you full coverage of the sensor not just the, the central part um, in terms of your focus points this is actually slightly better however it can be a bit lacking in contrast however if I was to suggest a sort of combination you could go for um, to use both lenses in the field um, I recommend obviously getting the 800 um, RF lens and also getting the 100 to 400 but not have the extender on. Take the extender off or if you must use an extender consider using the 1.4 it's significantly better in image quality and then just have that as your go-to wildlife setup. Um, an alternative to the Canon would be the Sigma Contemporary um, or the Sigma Sport um, you know because they're uh, quite a bit cheaper than this the Sport will set you back about £1200 and the Contemporary around £900 to £800 depending on where you get it from so again conclusion is there are good lenses but don't expect the RF lens to be super tack sharp it's about the equivalent in sharpness to the 100-400 with the 2x on. Um, it's just a tiny bit sharper. Um, when I said tiny bit, I meant five. I mean five percent sharper. That's all. You're not going to see it in the real world. Only on test charts will be able to see a difference. Um, you know, and obviously, you can always take the extender off the 100-400. That's the bonus. That's the benefit. And even with the 2x on there you get full coverage of your sensor in terms of focus points unfortunately the RF lens Canon has limited that to just the central part so you're basically getting half of your um, sensor is only covered by the, the you know the white box for focusing on this particular lens that's a bit of a disappointment I think Canon didn't have to do that um, would I consider using extenders with the RF lens probably not f11 is already very dark you don't want to make it even darker at f uh, i think it's f16 and f22 but these lenses paired with the r6 or r5 or eos r um, will still do a good job one last thing before you go please like the video subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy the content i do i know a lot of you guys just skip past my videos and don't like it but i would really appreciate if you did that it sounds like I'm begging, I do apologise, but um, it helps the algorithm um, and helps people find my content. Hope to see you in another one. Take care of yourselves in these difficult times and have a nice day.